thanks and we give you praise for another day that you have made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. We also thank you for the gift of your word that you have given us so that your word may be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray, Heavenly Father, as we go into the study of your word, that you will open our eyes and our hearts and our understanding so we can behold wondrous things of your word. Father, we don't just want to accumulate knowledge. We also want to be able to walk practically in the lessons that we will learn, to, that we will learn from here today. So, Father, we commit ourselves unto you. We ask for listening ears, teachable spirits, and understanding minds in the name of Jesus. I pray for myself as well, that I may be able to deliver your counsel to your children. That, Father, together we will learn and we will be transformed by the truth of your word that we would learn today. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all for coming. Once again, I really appreciate your time. I know some of you are quite tired as well. But I, like I said to Shemi before we started, I had a little chat with her. And I said, don't worry. The word of God is quick and powerful. So I'm trusting that the word of God will quicken every one of us tonight. And that as we listen, that word will renew our strength as well in Jesus' name. Amen. So without taking much of our time, we're just going to go straight into the study we have for today. And the title of my study for us today is The Power of Thoughts. The Power of Thoughts. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever taken time to think about your thoughts, what um, your thoughts are made of. Um, do you have power over your thoughts? Do your, do your thoughts have power over you? We're going to, by the grace of God, thrash that and sort of look into uh, what our thoughts entail okay so the foundation of scripture for our lesson today is proverbs 23 verse 7 and i read as a man thinks in his heart so is he eat and drink he says to you that's somebody but his heart is not with you what that scripture implies is that somebody may have some thoughts in their mouth, in their minds, but what they're actually communicating in their speech is totally different. And that's the reason why we're looking at the power of thoughts. Because what the Bible is saying here to us is the real person is what they think in their minds, is not actually what they say in their mouth. So let's just begin to, first of all, reflect even upon that. What about me? Do my thoughts and my words, do they line up? Are they the same thing? Do what I think, rep, uh, is that what I represent when I open my mouth? Am I a fake person or am I a real person? Because a fake person is a person who thinks something else but says otherwise. You know, when you look at Judas, remember, he kissed Jesus like I'm your friend, Lord. But actually, he wasn't Jesus' friend and he betrayed him in the end. So let's begin to look at the power of our thoughts. So if thoughts are that, uh, has got that kind of potential and such latent power within it, how can we get the advantages, the benefits of our thoughts? It means that there are good sides and there are bad sides to thoughts. But we want to look at how our thoughts, how we can benefit from our thoughts. But first of all, we need to look at where thoughts come from. So I've started today to say to us that contrary to what most people believe, our thoughts actually should not rule us. We should be in charge of our thoughts. We should have total control over our thoughts. Sadly though, many people feel that they are powerless when it comes to what their thoughts are. They think that they cannot help themselves. So you hear people say, I couldn't help myself. Um, this is what I was thinking. A lot of people that do bad things um, say that, oh, they heard a voice in their brain, in their minds, telling them to do this, telling them to do that. But by the grace of God, by the time we go into the study of the word today, we will realize that actually we have control over our thoughts. And how we are going to gain back control over our thoughts 
is what we're going to look at today. Look at today by the grace of God. So where do our thoughts, thoughts come from? What is the origin of thoughts? My answer is to that question is our thoughts come from our soul. And I'm going to take us way back to Eden when God made Adam and Eve and put them in the garden. Now the Bible says that God created man from the dust of the earth. Then he breathed into that man, into that clay that he has made or the piece of, the, you know, the, the piece of creation that he made from that dust. And then he breathed into it. And the Bible said that creature, that creation that God made became a living soul. And that's the realm where our thoughts come from. Before Adam and Eve sinned, they had no, you know, their thoughts were pure. They could communicate with God. They had fellowship with God. The Bible also tells us that God will come down in the cool of the day, in the evening possibly, and he will fellowship with them. Their thoughts were pure. So there was no uh, need to say, oh, what are my thoughts? Remember the Bible said, whatever Adam called those animals was the name that they had forever. So, you know, he named lions, he named tigers, he named leopards, you know, all of the animals and all the plants. It must have come from his thought. He must have looked and thought, hmm, this person, this one looks like, oh, I'm going to call you a lion. This one looks like, oh, I'm going to call you an elephant. Can you imagine? He named all creation. God gave him that um, uh, privilege to name all his creation. They came from his thoughts. He looked from his soul and he said, that's what we're going to call. I'm going to call this river. I'm going to call this sea. I'm going to call this ocean. I'm going to call this one an, a, a lizard. I'm going to call this one a serpent. That's the power. That's the privilege that God gave Adam. But unfortunately, man lost all of that privileges when we sinned. Or when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost all those privileges. And of course, that's how we human beings today inherited sin from Adam and Eve. And unfortunately, when they sinned, their soul got corrupted. Their soul got, um, I'm trying to find a word that is modern um, to use. I suppose it's corrupted, you know, like when... Um, Today now in the computer world or in the tech world, yes, so we get a computer virus that corrupts data, for instance. That's the same thing. The data that Adam and Eve had was corrupted through the introduction of sin, which is the virus that, you know, was introduced into their lives. And so because they got corrupted, their thoughts became corrupted and that's where the history of blaming came from. Now Adam blamed God. I mean, can you imagine when Adam saw Eve, it was like, wow, woman, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. It was like, there's nothing better than this. And then they sinned and lo and behold, Adam went, God is the woman you gave me. So now it's God's fault for giving Adam Eve. And then of course, Eve turned around, it's the serpent. So, you know, at the end of the day, God gets all the blame. And it's still the same today. God, why are sick people dying? God, why are people dying? God, why are people hungry? We forget that the world has been corrupted, that this was not God's original plan for planet Earth. And that all the things that are happening are because man has corrupted everything we can say, well, it's the devil that made us, but we had a choice. Remember, we had a choice. Eve didn't need to have listened to the serpent in the first instance. And so this is what is going on with regards to our thoughts. We inherited corrupted thought pattern from Adam and Eve. And that's how our thoughts are corrupted. Why am I going into all this? The reason why I'm going into all this is I want us to see the reason why we think we don't have control over our thoughts because the enemy has made us to think that way. But today, by the grace of God, we're going to look into the Bible 
see what the death and the resurrection of Christ has bought for us, has given us, so that we can now begin to get the benefits of the new mindset that God wants us to have. And he's already given it to us in Christ Jesus. That's what we're about to discover today by the grace of God. So Christ came to redeem us. He paid the price for our sins by dying for us on the cross. And he restored our loving relationship with God. Now part of this salvation package, in the salvation package we have healing, we have deliverance, we have protection, we have provision, we have peace of mind, going on and on. Also, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16, that we have the mind of Christ. So now, the problem now is we don't always remember those of us who have given our lives to Christ, we have surrendered our lives to Christ. The Bible says we are now new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Things have become new. But is that our experience? The answer is no. Because we forget that we have a new mind. We forget that we are no longer the old person that we were before we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So a lot of these things is because we don't bring to our remembrance who we are in Christ Jesus. And because we don't do this, because we don't realize that we have the mind of Christ, that we're new creation, we allow the devil to cheat us. And that's why we go, oh, I don't feel well today. When the Bible says by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we have been made whole. When we don't feel well, what we're supposed to say is, hey, come on, buddy. Remember the word of God. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus. So I speak healing to myself because I have been healed in Christ Jesus when he was beaten and he died on the cross. He paid the price for my healing. And that's the way we need to use our rights and privileges as a child of God. And that also includes our thoughts. And this is the reason in Philippians 2 verse 5. And that's what we will be looking at today. We'll be breaking it down for us to understand what does it mean to um, let the mind of Christ be in us. A lot of us, some of us are from World Harvest Christian Center. We know that we, it's a phrase that we use a lot in our church. Let the mind of Christ be in you, you know. But what does it mean in a practical sense? That's what we're going to break down today by the grace of God. So, it says we should let the mind of Christ be in us, meaning we should let the mind of Christ that is within us be in operation. A lot of times, the mind of Christ within us is lying dormant. We are not making use of it. How do we make use of it? So, verse 5, of, uh, verse 6, rather, of Philippians chapter 2, tells us to think like Jesus. How does Jesus think? Verse 6 says, who being in the form of God, we're talking about Jesus now, because he is our example. Jesus being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now remember last week we spoke about Gideon. The angel appeared to him and called him a mighty warrior. Of course he just thought, excuse me, somebody must have eaten too much pizza today. Because I definitely am not a mighty warrior. This is me hiding from the Midianites. How can you call me a mighty warrior? I am so far from it. And then he even started with the, the, his clan being the lowest and he being like maybe number five or seven children or whatever. I mean, he saw himself so low. And that's how we are sometimes as Christians. We don't see ourselves the way God sees us. And because we don't, we are not able to fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives. It took some persuasion before Gideon could now, you know, agree with God that, okay, if this is the way you see me, I am going to lead Israel to battle. And thank God he did because he led Israel not only to battle, but to victory. And that's what God is saying to us, that when we realize that we have power over our thoughts, then we are able to live up to God's expectation and then we will live a victorious life every day it means that we can wake up from our beds with happy thoughts with joy with 
with praises coming from our mouths. Why? Not because the sun is shining, but because the Son of God is within us and He has lightened up our hearts and our spirits. And so, no matter what is happening in the environment around us, we maintain the light of Christ within us. And it's that light that we shine to the whole world so that they are attracted to God that is within us. So going on about Jesus not being, uh, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery. It means that the Bible says in Ephesians, for instance, it says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. God, because of the price that Jesus paid for, because of his death and resurrection, he has elevated us. We are no longer just normal human beings. We are actually extraordinary. We are supernatural beings. Even though we still live here on earth, we are supernatural. I remember when I gave my life to Christ and at the time my parents were mean to me because, you know, they didn't understand what was happening. I have to confess to you, I didn't turn on the, <laughs> the mind of Christ. I actually wanted my parents to die so they can go to hell and then I can prove them wrong. You know what I mean? But thank God, during those times, God made me to understand that no, Maureen, you have the mind of Christ and the mind of Christ prays for those who do wrong to them. They don't say kill them. They say God save them. And I remember the battle that was going on in my mind at the time. I used to say, God, I can't take this no more. And God would say to me, Maureen, you can. Because you're supernatural. You are no longer ordinary. You are extraordinary. And by the time God fully persuaded me like he did to Gideon, I was able to pray for my parents. And thank God, my mom gave her life to Christ long before she even died. And I trust that God, my, my father too did before he died. So what am I saying? I'm just sharing my own personal example of how I battled in my mind before the mind of Christ could come to the fore and I can begin to operate through the mind of Christ and not through the natural mind that was corrupted. That corruption that we inherited from Adam and Eve no longer in operation in my life. And it is day by day, moment by moment. It's not once and for all because once, as long as we're here on earth, we are in a battlefield, the battlefield of the mind. But as we go on, I'm going to show us how we can overcome by the grace of God. Going on about um, Jesus Christ being equal with God. It brings to mind Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They're thoughts of good. To do you good, not harm, not evil, and to give you a future and a hope. Isn't it wonderful that God thinks such good thoughts about us? And that's why we need to think good thoughts about us. If God who made us, who is our father, is thinking good thoughts about us, then why should we think less of ourselves? A lot of us sometimes have um, what you call low self-value. Today, I'm trusting God that when you see how much value God places on you, because I, I am persuaded that if I was the only person on earth, Jesus would still have died for me. That's how precious a human life is to God. That's how precious each and every one of us online right now is to God. We are so precious. And also our friends who do not know Christ yet, they are also precious to God. Remember John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And it's for whosoever believes in him that they will not perish but have eternal life. So going on, verse 7 of Philippians chapter 2 that we're breaking down this afternoon says, But Jesus Christ made himself of no reputation. He took upon himself the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of man. Now remember that Jesus came from heaven. He, and that's why he was not born of man and woman. Remember, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. And through that, she carried the pregnancy of Jesus and gave birth to him. So, it was a miracle that God did 
to give us Jesus Christ and he was born into planet earth. But God is saying that even though he had those privileges, he wasn't walking around and saying, look at me, look at me, I'm the son of God. No. Remember when he was um, in front of Pilate, when he was standing before Pilate, and Pilate was saying, why don't you defend yourself? He said, my, 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 my um, world is not here. My kingdom is not of this world. I don't need to blow my own horn. Just carry on with what you're doing. He was so confident to the end. Why? Because he knew who he was. And he knew that he had to follow this path to be able to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God for humanity and for himself. So he was able to surrender. Nowadays, when things happen, people go into panic mode. Why? Because they forget what the word of God says about them. Sometimes, you know, we worry, we, you know, we are afraid. Why? Because we forget who we are in Christ. My prayer is that this word today that we are hearing will challenge us to begin to use the mind of Christ. We have it already. But we don't allow it to operate, to come to the fore. We don't live our lives through the mind of Christ. We revert back to that old sinful mind that has been corrupted. But today I pray that we will come out of that in Jesus' name. Amen. So we need to be... Um, so it says that... Sorry, going back to taking no reputation. Even though he had those privileges like I said before... He didn't go about strutting about and going, I'm a son of God, I'm a son of God. No. In fact, a lot of times when he heals, he will tell them, don't tell anybody. Why? Because he wasn't looking to get attention for himself. Everything was about God, not about him. And the Bible also tells us in Romans 12 verse 3, it says, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, that's Paul, he was saying to us when he was writing that letter to the Romans, he says, I give each of you this warning. Don't think of yourself that you're better than others. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves and see yourselves through God's eyes. So again, just letting us know that even though we are children of God, that doesn't mean that we should go to our schools or, you know, show off to our friends and say, you know me, I'm going to heaven. I don't know where you're going. Maybe you're going to hell. No, the reason why we know that we are going to heaven is not so that we show off but so that we can have compassion and invite other people to join us on our journey to heaven. That's what it's all about. Now verse 8 says, this is still about Jesus and his mindset, the way he thinks. He says, I'm being found in fashion as a man. Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. You know, like I spoke about before that when Jesus stood before Pilate, instead of him saying, you know, because he did tell Pilate, he said, I can command angels to release me, but so that the will of God may be done. Just go ahead and do what you need to do. And this verse 8 is also emphasizing humility and obedience. As children of God, one of the marks of righteousness and our relationship with God is humility. In fact, there's a, in, in James 4, 6, it says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humility. And when we truly know that whatever we are, whatever we achieve is by the grace of God alone, then it will not be difficult for us to be humble. Because we know that we didn't come to the world with anything. Everything we have, everything we own, is by the grace and the grace of God alone. So, now that we have broken down the mind of Christ, how Jesus Christ thinks, how do we now train our own minds so that we can begin to walk and live through the mind of Christ that we already have? Remember I told you, we have that mind, but we are not using it. It's lying dormant. It's so silent. We are not allowing it. To operate in our lives. So how do we begin to operate? How do we begin to live our lives through the mind of Christ? Romans 12. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 gives us a clue. It says, and I read, 
Do not change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but be changed within by a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to decide what God wants for you. You will know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. I'm going to take it slowly. Do not change yourselves to be like the people of this world. Did you catch anything there? It says don't change yourselves. Because when we gave our lives to Christ, we became new creation. So this verse is saying don't go back to that old person you were. Like the people of the world. But be changed within the mind of Christ that is already inside of you. Live according to that mind that is within you. Then he goes on to say, then you will be able to decide what God wants for you. You will know what is good and pleasing to God and what is perfect. Sometimes we, we say, oh, I don't know. How do I know God is speaking to me? How do I differentiate between the devil speaking to me and God speaking to me? This is the clue. This is the key. It says, when we allow the mind of Christ, it says, be changed from within. Because that mind of Christ is there. It's by faith. So you tell yourself, Maureen, you have the mind of Christ. When I wake up in the morning, I remind myself, I have the mind of Christ. So I have the ability to know what is good. I have the ability to make right choices today. I have the ability to be everything that God wants me to be. Because I have the mind of Christ and it's going to help me to process every information that is going to come. So then when somebody gives you an, a piece of information, either you it's from the internet or from school, you know your friends. Like I always tell my children, when somebody gives you a piece of information, sift it, run it through. A, does it match God's word? B, does it match what my parents have told me? A lot of us on the line, if not every one of us, we are so blessed because we have Christian parents. We have God-fearing parents. They read the Bible with us. They teach us what to do. When somebody now tells us something that is against what our parents have told us, like I always tell my children, just chuck it straight into the bin. Don't even entertain that thought at all. And then the higher authority is God's word. Does this match what I have read in my Bible? And this is the reason why we read our Bibles. Is because we need to know the word of God. Remember when Satan was going to tempt Jesus? He twisted God's word. He didn't come with some other information. He wanted to trip Jesus with God's word. Using God's word. He says, oh, the Bible says. And Jesus now replied with the correct word of God. So that's the reason why we need to read our Bibles. So going on to how do we receive thoughts is because there are some information that come and we need to now look within and sift it and assess the words that we hear. Does it match what my parents have told me? Do these words match what I have read in the Bible? If it doesn't, chalk it. Don't entertain it. That's how to win this battle of our thoughts. The second scripture that gives us a clue as to how to train our minds and begin to live from the mind of Christ is Philippians 4.8. Brothers and sisters, Paul was writing to the Philippian church. Think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. Think about all things that are true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. That's the clue. When you wake up in the morning, what are the thoughts, the first thoughts that come to your mind? Is it, oh dear, another day of school. I wish I didn't have to. Or do you hit the ground and say, the devil is in trouble. The child of God is up and about today. Oh my. And then, like I always challenge my children, you know, I used to say, to, I say to them a lot, when I wake up, I'm like, okay, devil, you're in trouble. God, what expedition do we have today? What adventure are we going to experience today? Because the Bible says that each day is new, you know? And the Bible also says that daily God loads us with benefits. So I'm so eager 
to get the benefits of each day. So I wake up and I go, okay, God, what are the benefits for today? You know, maybe not quite like that. You know, I thank him first, you know, uh, say thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Thank you for all that you have in store for me. We're in partnership with God. Each day has the plans that God has for that day. It has the will, the purpose that God has for us that day. You remember when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray? One of the lines of that prayer was, give us this day, this day, our daily bread. That daily bread is not just physical food. It's also spiritual food. Okay? And that's how we need to hit the ground running each day. Sometimes I wake up and I just ask myself, so why am I feeling so down? That's the trick of the devil. We don't live by feelings. We live by faith in the word of God. And that's why, again, like I said, we need to read our Bible. Because because I've been reading my Bible for quite some time, I can recognize when the devil is bringing some things that are not in line with God's word. Okay? But that's, you know, you can start today. And it doesn't mean that you have to read chapters and chapters and chapters. Even if it's a verse of the scripture. When you take it in and you say, you know, I love Psalm 119. There's a verse that says, how will a young man cleanse his way? And then it replied again that by taking heed to your word. That's the only way we can win this war against the devil that doesn't want us to live up to God's expectation and enjoy our rights and privileges as children of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, and I'm going to read. It says, we do live in the world, but we do not fight in the same way the world fights. We fight with weapons that are different from those the world uses. Our weapons have power from God that can destroy the enemy's strong places. We destroy people's arguments and every proud thing that raises itself against the knowledge of God. This is the clincher. We capture every thought and we make it give up and obey Christ. That's where our authority comes from. That's the reason I told you, you have power over your thoughts. Don't just lie down there and say you're daydreaming and you don't know where your thoughts are taking you. No, your thoughts realm actually is a resource. It's something that God has given you to use. How do you think Michelangelo painted you know, uh, you know the, the, the church, the, the, the top of the church and all the things, the paintings that has been, um, you know, that people say that he's done. All the work of arts. How do you think people do them? It's from their thoughts. They see it in their mind's eye and then they recreate it. It's the same thing. A lot of you, every one of you on the line tonight, this evening, God has deposited great things inside of you. You're supposed to bring them out through your thoughts and then you recreate them and we can all see them manifest in the world. You, we see um, all the towers in London today and we are amazed at the gifts that God has deposited in human beings. That's because they use their thoughts. They use that resource that God gave them. My challenge to you today is begin to use the resource, which is your thought realm, to create what God has for you. When we switch on to the mind of Christ within us, and we allow it to lead us and guide us, you begin to re see great and mighty things. That even your parents will begin to wonder, what's going on? Oh my goodness, I didn't know I had a genius at home. And I'm not just whipping up you know our emotions it is very true there is a lot locked up on the inside of us all we just need to do is agree with god who he has called us to be and begin to use our thoughts to begin to create some of us it could be in writing there's so many bloggers here that you don't even know that you can write things that people will be so impacted even adults there's a friend of mine, I read the, the daughter's um, blog. She is so, I mean, the Bible talked about the three Hebrew children um, during the time of Daniel. He's Daniel's friends. The Bible said God made them wiser, ten times wiser than their counterparts. And that was even before the time of the Holy Spirit. 
Now we have Jesus Christ on the inside. Can you just imagine the potential that we have not even tapped into as children of God? My prayer, my challenge to us is that we begin to see the power that is locked up on the inside so that we can release that power. Because you see, when we release those powers, it's not only going to benefit us, it's going to benefit the world. That's why we are the salt of the earth. That's why we are the light of the world. And so I'm going to be rounding up now. Thank you very much. This is a time where we can ask questions. Um, my question was, uh, is, <laughs> what are places in the Bible that you can look to so that you can gain confidence in yourself so that your thoughts are positive? So what references of the Bible can help you have more positive thoughts than negative thoughts? Did we hear da Daniel's question? No. Okay, so he's saying, can I give Bible references so that the, um, you can go to read them and gain self-confidence and get to know who God says you are? Okay, and be positive in your thinking. And I'm just going to go back to one or two that I have read so that we also know who God says we are. So the, the very good one is Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. God is saying that there is no other assurance we need than God's word to us saying that his thoughts towards us are thoughts of good. If our creator is taking the time to tell us that his thoughts towards us are good, then that's all the confidence that we need, or the confidence boost that we need. We need to begin to have faith in the word of God and trust that what God says is true about us. The important thing that I want you to take away from today's lesson, though, is that you have power over your thoughts. You are not a slave to your thoughts. Your thoughts is a, uh, or your thought, <laughs> your thought life is a slave to you. You can make your thoughts what you want it to be. It's your choice. Nobody else has that choice but you. Okay. And when we look at Christ, who is our example, we see, you know, how he lived his life. And I'm just going to go quickly to talk about the benefits of a renewed mind. You know, one of them is what we read in Romans 12, verse 2. I'm going to reread that so we understand. It says we should not change ourselves to be like the people of this world, but be changed from within by a new way of thinking. Then we will be able to decide what God wants for us. So when we have a renewed mind... We are able to decide. I've, I've just seen a question come through. I'm going to finish this sentence. So when we have a renewed mind, we're able to decide what is the will of God for us. Okay. So I'm going to look at the, word, the question. My question is, when the devil puts thoughts in our minds that sound good at the moment in time, how should we deal with them? What about if we don't have a Bible or our parents near us? Again, like I said, it, uh, that's the reason why we need to read our Bible. That's the reason why we need to listen to our parents. Okay? Now, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us and he will bring to our remembrance what we have heard and what we have been taught. So, whenever someone brings or the devil puts thoughts in our minds, like I said, and like Romans 12, 2 that we have read has said, we are supposed to look within. The Holy Spirit is within us. So we check within us. At that point in time, the Holy Spirit will bring the words of God to you. So you need to listen to your heart within you and check with what is within you. So in conclusion, if we want to enjoy all the benefits that God has given us as children of God, we need to renew our minds. The corrupt mind cannot enjoy the things of God. We need to switch on the mind of Christ that is within us to be able to enjoy him. Okay?
Any more questions? If not, we're going to close in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for today. We thank you for enabling us to hear your word today. And we thank you for the lessons that we have derived from your word today. Most especially knowing that we are in control of our thoughts. That what we think is our choice. We don't have to be a slave to our thoughts. And that our thoughts are gifts to us. Our thought life is supposed to be a resource from you that we can use so that we can be all that you have created us to be. So, Father, we thank you. We pray that we will not just be hearers, but we will be doers of your word as well. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for the time that we have spent. If we don't have any more questions, then we will end for today. We are still here next week as well, 5 o'clock by God's grace. I pray that you will be blessed by this even as you listen afterwards. Thank you and God bless. Bye.